Hello everyone, my name is Haley and I've been a nurse for about 10 years. I'm here today to advocate for the innocent patient who experiences trauma. I just want to quickly go over what verbal abuse is. So basically it's a form of emotional abuse consisting of the use of abusive or demeaning language uh, with a spouse, child, or elder, often by a caregiver or other person in position of power. Now after hearing what happened in this scenario, doesn't this sound like verbal abuse to you? Well, the healthcare community has developed ethical theories and principles for a reason. And as a fellow nurse, I know the importance of following these principles in order to maintain proper nurse-client and nurse-nurse relationships. Taking a look at the many ethical principles that nurses are supposed to abide by, it looks like this nurse did not obey the principle of autonomy, non-maleficience, beneficence, and justice. So there are several ethical principles that all healthcare professionals must abide by. Autonomy, meaning that a competent individual is able to determine and act within a self-chosen plan. In this case, the patient is competent, he understands the situation, and has made the decision that he does not want the nurse being exposed as he believes she's just tired, she did not hurt him. Um, this conflicts with Margaret, the visitor, as she believes that it is important to report the nurse. Fidelity is about the nurse-patient relationship. It's about nurses being loyal and keeping promises to the many people who trust us within their care. The nurse taking care of her patient did not keep her promise. When entering the healthcare profession, we know what it entails. Um, the work is hard. It's heavy, long, and often very draining. Our patients have trust in us that we will provide the best possible care to them in their vulnerable state. Sure, she was probably overworked and very tired, but it does not give her the right to yell at her patient for something that he cannot control. Non-maleficience, meaning that the, the people of the society are legally bound to act in such a way to prevent or remove harm. So this is conflicting because Margaret believes that she needs to report the nurse for verbally abusing her patient, which she should, um, to prevent harm to that patient. But the patient states that everything's okay and that he believes he does not want her to report the nurse. Not only does Margaret have to oblige by this principle, but the nurse should have been following it as well. Um, it is our job as nurses to prevent or remove harm from our patients um, and not to cause harm as well. Beneficence meaning that one makes a positive move to produce some good or benefit for another. Um, the nurse is not benefiting her patient at all. Um, if anything, she's making him feel more self-conscious about the situation that he's in. The nurse knows the importance of maintaining a healthy nurse-patient relationship um, in order to help the healing process and make the patient feel more comfortable. Um, by verbally abusing her patient, she could remove the trust that this patient has for her um, and even for healthcare workers, like in general. She could make it difficult for him to enter any healthcare setting as he's like because he's experienced this, um, as well as he may refrain from asking for help due to um, the, negativ the negativity that he's uh, receiving. It could cause a great amount of pain or harm for him as well. Lastly, justice. So justice means fairness and equity for everyone. This nurse is not providing fair care. Every patient should be treated with respect and all patients should be treated the same. Um, if this nurse is treating all of her patients the way she treated this man, then she needs to step, take a step back and reevaluate what she's doing. She is not fair, she is not equal, and this is not right. I think that, most that the most important principle to take away from this matter is the fact that she's not following fidelity. This is the number one principle that we learn in nursing school, the nurse-patient relationship, how to get patients to trust you as a nurse when providing their care. Just because this nurse has decided to act in this horrific way does not mean that all nurses are like this, but this sets the ground for other nurses. So ethical theories. So in the conclusion that punishment is required for the action taken by this nurse, it's important to understand what theories and methods that can be put to use in order to determine the best possible outcome for everyone. So the utilitarian theory believes that the most ethical choice is the one that has the best outcome and result. This is a great theory to put to use, especially because it thinks about all parties in the situation. Um, not only will it benefit the, benefit the patient, but it will also benefit the nurse. The nurse may have a valid reason as to why she reacted in the way that she did, so it's important to validate that and provide the best possible outcome. Mill's utilitarianism provides the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people. Very similar to the utilitarian theory, um, we would then discuss a plan that makes each individual involved happy about the outcome. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the deontological theory. So 
Um, this involves rules that determine what's right or wrong based on one's obligations and duties. So this is very relatable in this scenario. If you think about it, the nurse has a duty and an obligation to provide the best possible care for her patients. She's required to meet all codes and standards and treat all patients with respect. She ruined the trust she had gained with her patients due to the fact that she acted in such a terrible way um, that could potentially cause harm to her patient. Kant's theory of moral value focuses, um, states that it's insufficient to look only at actions and the consequences of those actions without looking at the person's motives or um, intentions. So if the nurse had a valid reasoning behind how she acted that could potentially benefit um, the patient or have positive intentions, this would be a good theory to utilize to determine the course of action. Personally, I do not see how verbally abusing an innocent man has any good intention whatsoever. So I believe that this nurse needs time to reevaluate what she's doing, why she entered this profession, and what she needs to do to improve her attitude towards others as well as her professional behavior. Using the deontological theory to determine this course of punishment is only right. Um, as a nurse, she has duties and obligations, and she knew these obligations, what, um, what they were when she entered this profession. We need to focus on the safety of our patients and what we need to do to protect them. What would it look like if we stuck up for the nurse? How would other patients feel entering our care? Think about that.